Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another 3016 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today, finally, we're taking a look at none other than their Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 5 core team pack plus the Green Ranger, making for a total of 6 Power Rangers inside this one box. You'll know I'm a huge Power Rangers fan, so yeah, I'm super excited to get them out here. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is of course down in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art for the Power Rangers. Right up here on the front of the box we have an image of the various helmets. We've got a morpher down the bottom that just lets us know hey this is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers six pack and then we have some artwork dotted around the box. We've got a seal letting you know yes this is an officially licensed product, some more logos on the top and an absolutely awesome gold foil image of the various power coins. On the side we do have a shot of the entire team. Now it's worth noting that this box is absolutely enormous of course because there's six full figures on the inside. Now we do have some instruction sheets that have fallen out but don't worry we will address them in time. On the outside of the inner box we do have a few more images of the rangers fully assembled as a team. In fact if you open it up you get a gorgeous spread showing some amazing poses. But we're not really here to dissect the box, we're more here to look at the figures themselves. Now to save having to wrangle this box on camera I think there's only one way to get them out here. And here we have them in their clam tray. Now just like all of my other ensemble cast type reviews, we'll be taking a look at all of the accessories first, then breaking down each individual ranger. But I do want to get a little bit of a sneak preview or a first in hand impression of at least one. So what better one to start off with than the Red Ranger himself. I have to say first impressions are very positive. I'm liking the look and the feel of this guy in hand, specifically the metallic sheen on the outfit and the super high gloss of the helmet. But don't worry, we'll be going into much more detail when we take a look at each figure individually. What we are going to do now though is get all of their accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything they come with. Here we have all of the parts, pieces and weapons that go with the Rangers. Now I know to some Power Rangers fans these pieces are equally as important as some of the details on the suits themselves, so fingers crossed 3-0 have done them justice. Now we may as well take a look at the instruction manual first. It's very simple, it's literally just one sheet with one side showing you how you combine the various power weapons to create the power blaster and some of the moving parts on the individual pieces which I for one am very excited to try out. Now you'll notice there's one distinct thing that is absent here, display bases. 3-0, please consider giving these Power Rangers figures some display bases going forward. We're not asking for anything crazy, just literally a rectangle with a power coin printed on the front. We want to have these guys and gals in dynamic poses and without those bases it can be a little bit challenging to keep them standing. Now let's take a look at some of their hands. I'll only be showing the unique hands per ranger because they're pretty much all identical. As for the red ranger he comes with these style pose open palm hands. I like the sculpt here with this faux stitching and a little bit of wrinkling towards the top of the fingers there. They may be a little bit too clean. If you go ahead and check out any of the Japanese Power Rangers footage, you'll notice that both the white boots and the gloves were always filthy. But nevertheless, not a huge thing to complain about. As for the Yellow Ranger, she has these dagger holding hands with one finger out. Again, sculpted and painted in a crisp white, they look fantastic. The Black Ranger does come with this style pose open palm hand that is a little bit different to the Red Rangers. Billy the Blue Ranger does come with these karate chop palm hands as well. You do get two of them so you can have one on either side. 
As for the Pink Ranger, she does, of course, come with the requisite hands required to hold the power bow and the arrow. They look fantastic. Now, the Green Ranger, being the special case, actually does come with some bonus hands, meant to be used to play the Dragon Dagger. Now, they could technically be swapped in between the various ranges if you wanted to give, say, potentially this one to the Red Ranger, because unfortunately we are missing those iconic T-Rex two-fingered hands. I was hoping that 3-0 were going to add them in, but unfortunately they didn't. Now before we start dissecting the power weapons, I do want to take a look at the Blade Blasters. These things are fantastic. They're painted and sculpted very nicely. Now I know it looks like they're a little bit sloppy, but that's actually intentional wear and tear. These things, just like the suits themselves, got mighty beat up on the show. So they do show a little bit of wear and tear on the surface, and I really like that. You can also see Power Rangers printed on the front, and the various parts and pieces are picked out in the correct colours. But the coolest thing here is that you can swivel the parts and pieces down to create either the blaster mode, or then sliding this back, and closing it up, we can also swivel out the blade. It's a little bit challenging to do it, but there's a tiny little lip that you can push your fingernail down on, and you can bring the blade out. So yes, it fully converts into all three modes. That's the first time I think I've ever seen that on a smaller scale blade blaster. And yeah, I'm very impressed. That's some crazy attention to detail by 3-0. Next up, let's start off with the Power Sword. This thing is awesome. It's painted to the nines. We have the T-Rex power coin there and a little bit of chipping just around the front and also down the bottom to make it look once again, a little bit beat up. The top of the sword is done in a beautiful, shiny, metallic silver. There isn't any wash down in the crevices for the blade detail, mind you, but that's totally something that you could add if you wanted to do that. Now, moving on to the power daggers, you do have the little saber-toothed tiger coin there done in a beautiful silver, and once again, some chipping and extra detail on the surface. The blades are also a little bit sharp, so do be careful not to prick yourself. Moving on to the power axe, this thing is one big beefy boy. You can also see some scuffs on the surface of this. The Mastodon power coin, and yes, it does have that moving centerpiece if you do want to convert it from axe into blaster mode, and also that function will be used when we install the various other weapons to make the power blaster. Moving on to the power lance, this thing actually does have a moving part. You can extend this out, bringing in the one for the other side, and also extending that, you can then very simply plug them together to make the fully extended power lance. Again, that's a very impressive thing that I really didn't expect 3-0 to do, but they totally did. They decided, no, no, we're going all out on the ranges here. We don't want to include a second piece that slots in in the middle to make it the longer power lance. We want to have it be an actual telescopic moving mechanism. And I, for one, am very happy they did that. You do have the Triceratops power coin sculpted and painted in a beautiful metallic gold. Unfortunately, on one side of mine, though, the gold seems to have spilled out. I'm sure that won't be an issue on everyone's copy, and it's something I will definitely be trying to get fixed. Now, moving on to the power bow, you do have the Pterodactyl coin there, and it also says Jew Ranger on the front. That is accurate to the Japanese footage, and it's something I never expected them to do. I would have thought they would have just put Power Rangers on there to keep with the American theme, but they didn't, and I love that. It's also fully sculpted, it's not just painted on the surface, you can feel the lettering, and that means it actually has some depth. You also have some silver paint on the front here, and a real working elastic string. Now, of course, to go along with the bow, you have to get an arrow. 
You only get one, but that's more than enough for me. Some paint chipping and scuffing on the various pink surfaces, and it is very sharp and pointy. Now lastly, moving on to the Green Ranger's weapons, my favourite of the bunch. Here we have the Sword of Darkness. I've always loved the sculpt of this, and this I think is the best interpretation I've ever seen of it. There's some wash down in the crevices, beautiful metallic gold and shiny silver, and then of course the accurate tassel down the bottom. That's something a lot of companies don't do, but 3-0 got it right once again. Now this piece might be the most detailed weapon out of all of these, and it's for good reason. This is the super iconic dragon dagger. It's sculpted gorgeously, and it's painted equally as well, all the way down to the tiny little details on the flute end, this thing looks like a million bucks. You do have the Dragon Zord power coin on the front there, and once again done in a beautiful metallic. But I'm pretty sure you'll want to see the various weapons combined into the power blaster, so... And here we have it, fully assembled. Now the reason that I did it off camera was because I wanted to take my time and get it to look just right and not scuff any of the paint, but I'm pleased to report it was super simple and we will disassemble it on camera so I can showcase some of the really cool elements here. Now starting off with the overall look, it's accurate to the show as far as I can tell. Everything snaps into the accurate place, the string sits where it's supposed to sit, and everything is suitably secure. It's not 110% secure, but it definitely won't be falling apart. Now, some of the cool things while we take it apart is the magnetic attachment for the various sections at the front. The power daggers and the power lance both have magnets, so they just simply and easily pop into place. That's a feature that, you know, I absolutely love. I'm a huge fan of using magnets when it comes to 1-6 scale accessories. So the same thing with the power lance, although these are a little bit heavier, so they tend to droop down just a little bit more. As for the power sword, it couldn't be simpler, it literally just snaps into the top. As for the power bow, it's a little bit of an interesting mechanism. It slides into place and then there's a groove on the handle which very nicely catches on the inside of this sliding piece. So basically the instructions say to put it here, slide this up and then slot it in. It's very simple, straightforward, and now we're back to just having the power axe. So for me personally, I think the weapons are a total win. But then again, I'm not potentially the biggest Power Rangers aficionado out there, so if there are any inaccuracies or something that just isn't quite right, let me know down in the comments box. And here we have the Green Ranger standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, and he looks absolutely sensational just like I was hoping he was going to. If there was ever an officially licensed company that I would have wanted to tackle Power Rangers aside from Hot Toys, yeah, 3 Zero would have been right up there, so I'm very, very glad they got the license. And fingers crossed we do get more characters from this lineup other than Mighty Morphin. I would love to see the In Space crew given the 1 6 scale treatment. For those of you who don't know, Power Rangers in Space is my favourite season, but that's not to take away from how good this figure is right here. I'm loving the proportions of the body, I'm loving the metallic sheen of the outfit, and that helmet looks gorgeous. Moving on to Billy the Blue Ranger. Now they've done something a little bit interesting here. They've used the exact same body for all of the male rangers. Some people might be upset by that. For me, some uniformity on the shelf is totally fine. Yes, they were all different shapes and sizes, so it would have made sense to use different bodies, but from a cost and manufacturing perspective, it does make sense to use the exact same underlying one, so that's exactly what they did. 
Moving on to Zack the Black Ranger. Again, same body, the proportions look great. They look muscular, but not overly so. They still do have that little bit of a slender look to them, just like we saw in the Japanese footage. And they do have that awesome metallic sheen. It definitely pops in the light box. Next up, we have Kimberly the Pink Ranger. Her outfit is one of the most colourful here. It's very, very saturated. We'll tackle that when we look up close and personal. But overall, yeah, she looks fantastic. The female body that they've used here is fairly well articulated and the proportions, once again, look good. She fits in very nicely along with the rest of the team. And so does Trini, the Yellow Ranger. She uses, once again, you guessed it, the same body as the Pink Ranger, and it's perfectly serviceable. They both fit in very, very nicely. Her outfit is also quite saturated, and I do also want to note, while we're seeing the entire figure standing here, that the colour match between the helmet and the outfit, while not 100% perfect, I will admit, it's still very good. Moving on to Jason, the Red Ranger, the leader of the team. This guy, honestly, they had to do justice. And I think they did. I love the sculpt of the helmet. It's very, very sharp. It's iconic Mighty Morphin Red Ranger. I think they nailed the proportions. But we'll touch on that when we zoom in. The outfit definitely looks like the Red Ranger. He's got the diamonds, as he should. The diamonds on the cuffs and on the boots are also there, just like the rest of the team. And that metallic sheen works a treat. What we are going to do now, though, is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. Starting off with the Red Ranger first, here we have him up close and personal. Now, some people were a little bit wary of the $99 price tag per individual Ranger. Usually when we get figures of a lower price point, it also results in a lower quality feeling product in hand. Can that be said for these Rangers? No, absolutely not. This is 3-0 we're talking about. They did an amazing job, from their choice of body to the material here, and also the sculpts of the helmets. Now, I'm by no means the biggest Power Rangers expert out there, so I'm sure people are going to head down to the comments and tell me, Justin, there are a bunch of inaccuracies, how can you like it? To me, if it looks like the Red Ranger and they've got some of the key markers down pat, then yeah, I'm suitably happy. First of all, they have the accurate V taper to the visor. The side profile looks fantastic. I also love the super high gloss to the red of the helmet, and it also has all of the black pinstriping up the top. They've picked out the Tyrannosaurus teeth in a gorgeous metallic silver, and the mouth looks like an accurate shape and size. So yeah, the helmet, for me at least, is an absolute win. Now moving down to the bodysuit. They've used a metallic red spandex, and it looks exactly like it should. If you don't believe me, pause this video, go ahead and pull up some of the Japanese Power Rangers footage, and it does look exactly like this. It's metallic, it's shiny. There is still a material texture here. It looks very, very faithful to the real life suits. We also have the white diamonds. These are done in this kind of rubbery feeling overlay. I am worried that over time they may get a little bit creased, I would have preferred these to have actually been sewn in out of this white material they used at the neck, but I totally understand why they didn't do that. They didn't want a bunch of stitching around the diamonds themselves, so this makes perfect sense. Now moving down to the Morpher, this thing is awesome. It's fully sculpted, including the lettering that says PAL Rangers, which is accurate to the US Morphers, and you do have the T-Rex Power Coin painted in a gorgeous metallic gold. Now he is missing those three little stripes on the black Morpher buckle piece, but that's not the biggest deal in the world. It still looks very accurate. You also have the black stripes around the belt itself, and also on the holster where you can slot in the blade blaster. Now on each of the ranges, you do have this piece which comes around the back and hides the clasp, because if you wanted to, you could totally remove their belts. Now these pieces, I'm not 100% sure about. 
Initially, I thought they were made of fabric just due to how they sort of cup and wrinkle up around the gloves themselves, but they sit a little bit too low for me and come around the top just a little bit too much. I would have liked for them to be a straight cut, kind of like they were on the show, because as it stands they sit a little bit too far down and make his hands look a little bit teeny tiny. At the very least, I do like the fully sculpted in diamonds, that's not just paint. Now, one thing that people were complaining about was the seam down the front. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but that is also accurate to the real life suits. So all of the other ranger figures that don't have that seam, that's inaccurate, it's totally supposed to be there. Lastly, coming down to the boots, it is a split cut boot design, so I'm totally in love with that. It also has the fully sculpted diamonds, and it does a suitable job of looking like a real boot. This piece comes around and has a little bit of wrinkling there, just like this piece for the glove here. Now, one more thing before we move on is the bodysuit. Next up, here we have Kimberly the Pink Ranger. Now, pretty much everything that I just said about Jason can immediately be applied to this figure. The material feels exactly the same, the way they did the glove cuffs and the boots, again, is identical. Now, we may as well talk about the Morpher first, because this does have to be accurate for this to be the Pink Ranger. You do have the Pterodactyl Power Coin, and once again, it does say Power Rangers along the front there. You also do have the Blade Blaster in the holster, and that same awesome black striping around the belt and the holster itself. Now let's talk about the helmet. I love it. The shape, the sculpt, and of course that super high gloss sets it off a treat. Now I totally understand this is a very hard helmet to nail in 1-6 scale, but I think this is the best interpretation that I personally have ever seen. We do have a very shiny silver metallic for the mouth, the black pinstriping along the top, and of course those two little green dots along the front there. Now the material, as I said, feels exactly the same as the Red Ranger, but the colour is obviously dramatically different. I like the very saturated pink that they've gone with here. Now if you do go back and look at some of the older footage, the colour does appear to be a little bit desaturated, but this colour for me definitely captures the essence of the Pink Ranger. When she's standing there on the shelf, this will absolutely help her stand out. Now she also has these two lines down the front of her skirt. That is actually accurate to the real screen use suit. It's a detail that I never noticed until I was doing research for this video, but yep, I looked at some pics and they absolutely are supposed to be there. She also has this trim around the bottom of the skirt that is made of the same material as the diamonds up above. It's this kind of rubbery, plasticky feeling white material, and it does tie the diamonds and this strip together rather well. Moving on to Billy the Blue Ranger, he also looks really darn awesome. Starting off with his Morpher first, yep, Triceratops Power Coin, once again all of the details are identical to the other ranges, including the feel of the material. This one is done in a metallic blue. They've gone more saturated once again, just like the Pink Ranger, and for me that works. Yes, a nice soft baby blue could have worked as well and it would have been accurate to certain footage, but this is the way to go, it just pops on the shelf. Now let's talk about the helmet. I love the way it looks. It does have the silver line along the top, kind of like a big honkin' eyebrow. That sometimes wasn't there depending on whether you were looking at American or Japanese footage, but they decided to do it for the figure. And I think that's perfectly serviceable. It means that the black of the visor is nicely broken up from the dark blue of the helmet, just creates a little bit more visual separation. He also has the Triceratops horns up the top and the golden eyes. Some people were also saying those should have been a vibrant yellow, 
but I think the gold works perfectly fine. He also has a very high gloss finish to the rest of the helmet. Here we have Trini the Yellow Ranger. Now I think it would have been cool and a nice nod to the Japanese roots of Power Rangers if they'd given you the option to go with a male body on the Yellow Ranger. I totally understand why they didn't do that, but potentially for a con exclusive perhaps in the future, that could be something that they could do, because they are doing Lord Draken, and fingers crossed they keep the line going. I would totally buy a male variant of Yellow Ranger, maybe even Ranger Slayer, some putties, and a Rita, and I think 3-0 could nail it with a Goldar. Either way, let's take a look at Yellow Ranger's Morpher. She does have the Sabertooth Tiger Power Coin, and it's picked out in that same gorgeous metallic gold. Then up here at the helmet, we have a very faithful recreation of the Yellow Ranger helmet. I love the black pinstriping, once again matching the rest of the figures, and that super shiny metallic for the mouthplate. You also do have those Sabertooth Tiger teeth that come around the front. I also love the, once again, more saturated colour for the outfit. The other versions of Rangers that we've seen in the past went for a little bit more of a muted colour tone. This pops. And I know I've said that a bunch already, but trust me, when you get these figures on the shelf, they look outstanding. Lastly, for the core rangers, here we have the Black Ranger, aka Zack. Don't worry, I've saved the best for last, we'll be looking at Green Ranger next. Now, even for the black outfit, they've also gone for that metallic sheen. The way the light bounces off it, it kind of has this ethereal look, and I'm all for it. As for the Morpher, yep, you got it, a Mastodon Power Coin. Now that I've seen a few of these, I'm kind of missing a little bit of a black wash in there. I think that would set off the actual animal on the front a treat. So I am tempted to try and do that myself. Let me know what you think about that choice down below. Now moving up to the helmet, yep, that's quintessential Black Ranger. He even has those little suggestions of horns or potentially mastodon ears up the top, the gold for the eyes, and those big honkin' tusks. I've always loved the design of the Black Ranger helmet, and they even got all of the various pinstriping on the front and all the way around the top. It's very sharp and very clean, and then that absolutely stunning high gloss to the overall helmet. This guy might just be one of my favourites in the set, right up there alongside the blue and the red rangers. Be still my heart. I said I was saving the best for last, and I totally meant that. There's no debate. This guy is my true favourite of the set. He looks glorious. Now, I could potentially be just a little bit biased, because back in the 90s when I was growing up watching Power Rangers on TV, Tommy was my all-time favourite, so that could potentially be influencing my decision. But even from a technical perspective, this guy is really well done. The Morpha is the accurate metallic gold, and of course you do have the Dragon Zord power coin. You have a specific black holster for the Dragon Dagger. The best way to install it, by the way, is to slide the blade part in first, then pull this elastic strap over the top. It's a little bit cumbersome to do, but trust me, once it's in there, it's very nice and secure. Now, the green on the outfit is very saturated, but it leans more towards a bluish green rather than a yellowish green, if that makes sense. It looks a hell of a lot more accurate to the Japanese footage than I've seen from other figures, and I'm all for it. This is the perfect shade. They've also done the diamonds underneath the dragon shield, so if you wanted to, you could technically remove it, because they are doing the PX exclusive Red Ranger with Dragon Shield, so if you want to make it look like Tommy has given the shield to Jason, you could somehow find a way of detaching it. It doesn't look like the easiest thing in the world to do, but I'm sure with a little bit of time, you could totally get that done. As for the shape of it, I love it. 
it is a little bit angled up towards the top, and then it does have a really nice swoop down the side. The diamond isn't overly large, it's a good shape and size, and we do have the black paint down in the crevices around the outside and also in the little pieces on the front. He also has the gold bands that can nicely move around and up and down to get out of the way of articulation. Now, the most important part of the Green Ranger is, of course, the helmet. Did they nail it? I think they did. I think they spent a little bit of time, because they knew how important it was, to revise the sculpt and get it as accurate as possible. Those who are experts, please let me know down below how close they got to the original Sentai helmet, because I think that they nailed it. The black pinstriping, the really glossy metallic to the silvers, and also the overall gloss of the helmet itself. He also has the red jewel up the top. Unfortunately, there's no gold trim around it, but that's something I can totally live with. Overall, yeah, this guy is my favourite in the set. But there is one more thing that I want to point out. Some people were complaining that when you bend the arms there's a little bit of wrinkling. The reason that's the case is because there's no padding. There's no padding at all in the joints. That means you're getting maximum range of motion without having to stress anything out. I have seen other Ranger figures not do this. They've had a bunch of padding to make the legs look a little bit more bulky, specifically at the joints here, but the way 3-0 have done it is the best approach. That means you're getting the maximum range of motion, and when he's just standing there, the wrinkling looks perfectly natural, like a real person in the suit. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the team fully assembled. And don't they just look fantastic? fantastic standing side by side. Now I've taken the liberty of doing a couple of iconic poses just so you can see what they look like together. But yeah, I mean individually they look great, there's no denying it, but when you put them all in the same shelf in some iconic poses, I mean, you can't help yourself but start to hear that Mighty Morphin theme song in your head. They evoke the classic TV series, they look like they're supposed to, the articulation is more than serviceable for me, which you'll find out in just a second. So overall, yeah, this early on in the video, I can already tell you, I am very, very happy. Just going over articulation on the Red Ranger. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now we're gonna do this a little bit differently, because we have six ranges to take a look at, because all of the male figures use the exact same underlying body, and the same thing can be said for the female figures, they share a body as well, we'll just take a look at the Red Ranger, the Green Ranger, because I want to see how that Dragon Shield will impact articulation, and then the Pink Ranger. But, starting off with the helmet first, it's on a double ball peg, one at the base of the head and then one at the base of the neck. So going forward, a fairly decent range, going back more than enough, unfortunately sometimes the helmet does come detached from the neck, if that happens, simply push it back down, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up on soft ratchets, which means they are nice and sturdy, they will go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder, swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow, and of course a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. As for the torso, it crunches forward and back on a soft ratchet, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs go forward on very stiff and squeaky joints, they go out to about there, swivel at the upper thigh, a ratcheted double bend at the knee, and of course a ball joint down here for the ankle. Moving on to the Green Ranger, he is largely very similar, but I am curious how this is all going to work. The helmet itself is identical in the range of motion, forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. Now the arms are still on those sturdy ratchets, but going forward it does sort of tend to collapse Lied with the dragon shield, but it's not a huge hindrance, you can definitely work with it. Swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow, these bands do nicely move out of the way, they aren't 
fixed in position. We do of course have a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. Torso going forward to about there. Just be careful that the tip of the diamond doesn't put too much pressure on the outfit because you don't want any pulls or any runs. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward the full way. Same thing going out. Swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend ratcheted knee, and of course that very same ball joint for the ankle. And lastly, here we have the Pink Ranger. She shares the exact same body as the Yellow Ranger, so all of the articulation points will be exactly the same between the two. Now, starting off with the helmet, unfortunately, it doesn't really move forward and back. I'm not exactly sure what's stopping it, but it sort of just springs back into place. You do, however, have swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up on ratchet joints, swivel forward and back. There is a butterfly joint at the shoulder, but it is more hindered than the male figures. You have a swivel at the bicep, a single bend at the elbow, and it does feel very stiff, so do be careful with that elbow joint. As for the torso, you have crunch forward and back, and it is rather significant, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs go forward to about there, but they do like to spring back down ever so slightly. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee, and of course a ball joint down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the 3-0 Mighty Morphin Power Rangers core set plus the Green Ranger. Now at the start of the video I told you all I was really excited. I mean, I'm a Power Rangers fan and a 3-0 fan, so for me this was a match made in heaven. And now at the end of the video can I honestly say that 3-0 did them justice? Yes, absolutely, they poured a lot of love and attention to detail into this set. This is now my personal favourite set of anything Power Rangers in the collection. Figure Arts, Lightning Collection, or anything made by any other companies. I love these figures. The bodies that they've chosen work perfectly. There's no padding, so that means you can go crazy with your posing to pull off a bunch of really iconic Mighty Morphin Power Rangers poses, which is of course what you want out of 1-6 scale ranges. The accessories are fantastic. Those blade blasters that can actually convert between the blaster mode, the holstered mode, and the blade mode, I've never seen that before out of a smaller scale version. So yeah, I was super impressed. Then of course we have the power weapons which can combine into the power blaster. It's a really cool thing that other companies have just straight up given you a big hunk of plastic that's pre-molded. Not 3-0, they use their engineering prowess and a bunch of cleverly placed magnets to make this thing actually come together and convert. And I think it's all the better for it. Plus, you have that telescopic mechanism in the power lance, which, you know, I really do love. The metallic look of the outfits works like a charm. It's accurate to the show, all of the stitching and seam lines are where they're supposed to be in accordance to the real life suits, and I think they've done a bang up job with the helmets. They look accurate, they're super glossy, the colours are very vibrant. So overall, at the end of the day, I can absolutely recommend this set. Now if you are a die-hard Power Rangers fan, yes, there are some inaccuracies here. But this is the closest that we've ever gotten to perfect 1-6 scale Mighty Morphin Power Rangers figures. So I'm pretty sure even y'all will agree, this is a darn good offering. Now I picked up mine from ToysWonderland.com, link for that is down in the description below. They do have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. While you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.